is Cooking Classic. We are here in the studios of the Culinary Arts Institute at the Zurn County Community College in Nanticoke, Pennsylvania. And Chef Paul Madalonis from Connor's Grill Room in Dallas has been kind enough to come and join us. He's going to talk to us a little bit about farm to table cooking and he has a great recipe in store. Now, Typically when we think farm to table, you know, we're thinking about all your produce and everything, but you really take that to the extreme, don't you? You're talking about pretty much everything you use? As much as I possibly could, yeah. from produce to proteins, okay. as much homemade stuff as I can make in-house, I do. So do you do most of the shopping on your own then? Or are you headed out or do people come deliver it and what are they bringing? A lot of people come deliver. Mm -hmm. um, in the summertime, I'm there at the go. farmer's market a lot. Uh, every Thursday at wilkes Bear. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. So what ki types of items are you purchasing? What can we expect at Connor's Grill Room to be fresh right from the farm? Whatever's in season. That's the name okay. of the game, pretty much. Okay. Now, how about meats and everything? You mentioned proteins. I have, there's a guy in Honesdale that I get a lot of my proteins from. He has lamb, chicken, pork wow. products. Okay. Now that's really become a big thing, isn't it? Raising chickens. What do you think about that as a chef? There are lots of people out there doing if that, right? If I had right? room to do it, I would do it. Would you really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Uh, I, I just find that amazing. I don't know. I, I'd probably become too good friends with the chickens and I yeah, wouldn't I want to eat them. Would it could be a problem. Over, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something to get over. Now tonight you're preparing, um, speaking of chickens, chicken thighs, white beans, and kale. Yep. Okay, so everything's fresh. Kale's become a really, really popular very big, um, yep. green, hasn't it? Yep, absolutely. And why is that? It's very healthy for you. Yeah. It's delicious if you pair it the right way. Okay. And then the salad that you're going to make. Tell us a little bit about that. And I have a bib salad mm -hmm. uh, with a lemon poppy vinaigrette, uh, beets, apples, and blue cheese. All right. It sounds good. And we'll be back right after this. We're going to move to the kitchen and get going. Uh, my name is Cynthia Mahalik. I'm a student here at LCC in the culinary program. Today I'm going to make deviled eggs for your tip of the day. First, you want to have your pot and fill it with water, enough to cover the eggs, and bring it up to a simmer. And then gently stir and place your eggs into the pot. You want to cook it for 12 to 15 minutes. You don't want to overcook your eggs so you don't get green egg yolks because that will discolor your deviled eggs. After you do that, you would like to put them in an the ice bath, and when they're cool enough, deshell them. After you do that, you want to take your eggs, cut them in half, separate the yolk from your egg, and then we're going to mix um, some mayonnaise, mustard, a little cayenne pepper, and salt and pepper in with our egg yolks. Okay, there's not really um, an amount, you're just going to mix it to taste. And you want to make sure that the egg yolks are um, not lumpy. And you don't want to make it too wet. I think I need a little more mayo. And when you get the right consistency, you want to put your seasonings in. I'm going to take a little cayenne pepper and then mix it in. Okay, so now you're ready to fill your eggs. You can put it in a pastry bag, but you can also take a spoon, fill each one.
Okay, when you're done, you would like to garnish it with some parsley and then a little paprika. And your deviled eggs are ready. And that's your culinary tip of the day. Bon appetit. Hello there. I'm glad you stayed with us because we are moving on to one of my favorites here with Chef Paul Manalonis at Connor's Grill Room. One of my favorite dishes. I like chicken thighs. I love kale and I like white beans. Good. I mean, you talked to somebody before you came, didn't I you? I picked the right dish, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you did. Um, we're going to start off with the white beans because um, here's really the way they look if you decide to use the if, real if you use thing, dry, yeah. dried beans, right? If not, then, well, first of all, let's go back. What do we do with these if we choose uh, to use the beans? You can either soak them overnight in cold water, or if you don't really have time to do mm -hmm. that or you forget, you could cover them with about two inches of water, bring it up to a boil, turn the heat off, cover it, and let them sit for about an hour. And all it does right. about the same thing. So don't think that because you forgot to put the beans in overnight that you can't make this the next day, right? right? right. <laughs> because you can now, can we use canned beans you, if we really don't want to go through this? You could also use canned beans. It'll save you a lot of time. It'll yeah. cut about 45 minutes off the whole procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do use canned beans, I would throw them in towards the end when we throw in the sausage and the kale. Okay. Otherwise, they'll overcook. All right, so the next step is going to be gonna starting with the chicken, sear my right? Chicken, yep. Okay. So I'm going to let you go. Add a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Okay. Here, I'll yes. take it from you. You get it nice and mm -hmm. hot. Uh, you always have to be careful when you're using raw chicken so you don't cross contaminate. Okay. Yeah, there's so much talk about that all the time, right? With salmonella. Right. And yes. You really have to be careful. It's another good thing about farm to table. You don't have to worry about the factory chickens where they're sitting in cages on top of each other. Good point. Good point. Uh, season it up with salt and pepper. And we were talking before, you know, like in the interview when we were, when I was goofing around, oh, I'd become too friendly with the chicken. The real fact is that most people raise chickens for the eggs, right? This is true. And I have to say, um, there's a local market that I've gotten their um, eggs from. They are raised chickens, and there really is a difference. They're delicious. So yeah, I don't blame you for doing you that. There really is a, a yeah, there's a big difference. Once you have farm fresh, mm -hmm. it's not really so comparable. a little olive oil salt pepper olive oil salt and pepper you can get some nice color on it while that's going you could chop okay. up your carrot and your onion and, and this is a one pot dish right this so is a you're one doing pot it dish. all right this is in there even something you could do in your slow cooker while you're at work okay. if you wanted to pretty much the same procedure mm -hmm. i'm going to leave the carrots a little larger because they're going to be in there for a while okay now how many um, servings are we talking about uh, with what we're seeing you do now? The recipe that I gave you is for four people. I okay. scaled it down for this to be two people. Though. Okay, so when you go online to get the recipe, you'll see it's for four people. So you'll and know to boost the ingredients. A few cloves of garlic as well. Mm, garlic, I love garlic. And you could just chop that up however you want. I like to do slivers. Get your chicken once you get it a little brown on it. Okay. Give it a flip. Now, will using canned beans change the flavor of this at all? It's not going to change the flavor at all. No? Do no. You, I, I mean, I hate to even ask you this, but do you think it's better to go ahead and use the dried beans and really do it all I like using the dried beans because it's a braised dish. It doesn't really matter that okay. it's, it's already going to take 45 minutes either way. So okay. if you use the dried beans, I just think it's a little better. Yeah. Uh, the canned beans tend to have a lot of sodium in them. Okay. If you get organic ones, they're a little better off. But. Okay. When you're doing farm to table, like in the summer and everything, can you get a lot of beans locally, really? What uh, kinds of beans? Can you get lima beans and stuff? You can get shell beans. Shell it depends beans. on what the farmers mm -hmm. want to do. Mostly people do green beans mm -hmm. or snap peas. Mm -hmm. uh, not really the ones that you have to shell yourself. People don't really want to deal with that a uh -huh. lot. So okay. I can get that plate, and then I'll take sure. this back out. There you go. Do you want me to hold that for you? Uh, I could just put it to the he side. Might be a little used to doing this on his own. What do you think? I'm just going to put right. this to the side for now so we can sure. saute the vegetables. Okay. And 
we'll reintroduce that back to the pot later. Okay. This always smells so good when you start to put the onion and the garlic and everything in there. I love that. As do I. So when you're doing this at Connor's Grill Room, <laughs> how many are you making this for? Well, usually if I do a feature, I'll do maybe 15 and then it's first come, first serve. <laughs> Especially when I do the farm to table dinners, right. we do four courses, so. Wow. Usually in one, uh -huh. one Friday we'll sell out. Yep. You're just gonna wanna there goes one onion, just like home, right, down. everybody? You just want to sweat these down there, a little bit. There happens here. And then you can season these up with a little salt and pepper as well. Okay. And for you. another important part, if there's any little brown bits uh -huh. on the bottom from the chicken, you want to yeah, kind of scrape those up a little bit because that's a lot of flavor. That's, yeah, the best part, isn't it? Yep. Well, I think the sausage is the best part. But. Oh, the sausage. <laughs> now, do you get that locally, too? Oh. Uh, you I'm, can. I'm using smoked sausage, and okay. I'm, I'm using kielbasa since we're in northeastern Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. <laughs> I figured out the way to go. <laughs> we should add the chicken back in now. Oh, this smells really good. Thank you. Yeah, it really does. Here, I'll take it from you. Thank you. Okay. And we could add our chicken stock. Now, did you make that stock? This, we can, I mean, we talk about this kind of all the time. This is you can stock, make it, you can, but use canned, right? This is stock or, that I made at the restaurant. Not everybody has time right. to do that at home. So right. And how could, much did you put in there? That was about a cup and a half, I'd say. Okay. Two cups, maybe. Just so that it comes about halfway up to the sides of the chicken. Okay. And that's important, isn't it? That it halfway up to the sides of the chicken. You don't want it to cover it? Not necessarily. Yeah, you're not looking to boil it, it really uh, when you're when you're doing a braised dish you really mm -hmm. want to use a minimal amount of liquid okay so cover it and cover lower it, the heat turn the heat down and then what and then it's a waiting Wait. game from there <laughs> about how long 45 minutes or an hour uh, we'll say about a half hour from uh -huh. here then we'll add the sausage the okay. beans and the kale maybe do another 10 minutes okay. and that'll be good by then okay when we come back we're going to make a salad to go along with this so don't go away because we're getting your dinner ready see you in a minute hello my name is Marie monte and i'm a culinary student at luzerne community college today i will be making a western omelet Actually, it's really hard for certain people to make these omelets, but it's actually quite easy. Today, I sauteed my peppers, my onions, and my ham for faster cooking inside of my omelet. Next, I will be cracking two eggs into this bowl. Then I will beat up the eggs. Make sure you evenly beat them so it's well combined. Now I'll be adding some of my onions, peppers, and ham into the mixture. Mix it up. Make sure it's well incorporated. Put that here. Now I'll be coming over here to my pan, which is already preheated. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of oil so that it can easily cook and so I can actually move the eggs. I'll say about a tablespoon of oil. Now I'll be adding my eggs. Turn up the heat just a little bit. You don't want to flip it too soon because then it'll break. You don't want your eggs to break. Now 
By the way, this is an eight inch Teflon pan. You need a Teflon pan because you don't want your eggs to stick to the bottom. I pulled back with my spatula to get the rest of the raw eggs so they can cook evenly with the rest of it and so it'll be easier for me to flip it as well. If you still have a lot of eggs at the top, I do it again. You gotta make sure your eggs are able to move around the pan. Get that out the way. Now this is the hard part, guys. It's the hard part. And sometimes that will happen. So all you do, you flatten it out a little without breaking your egg too much. cook it a little bit, you're done, and then we go and plate it. Right over here. Boop. This is our Western omelet, and this is my culinary tip of the day. Bon appetit. Okay, we're in the next step to this whole braised chicken, kale, and white beans. And that's really to add the kale add and the sausage, things. right? Uh, so this has been on for about a half hour now. Okay. So now we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Okay. Our white beans. Mm -hmm. Our smoked sausage. Okay. And we could just do a rough chop on the kale. It's going to wilt that up a lot. That really nice, that kale. It is. Yeah, this is local. Good. So where's the, what area is the farm in that you got the kale uh, from? In Falls. In Falls? Yeah, so maybe about 15 minutes from the restaurant. Oh. That's where all of our greens for our lettuces okay. and everything else comes from. Salad dressing. Now we can make our dressing while that's working. Okay. That'll take about another 10 minutes in there, so now is a good okay. time to do this. Uh, so we have about a Shallots. tablespoon of shallot. Take that. Actually, if you want to have me one of those spoons, it'll be easier. Sure. Would you like the teaspoon small or the one, yeah. tablespoon? Uh, about a half teaspoon of Dijon mustard. All right. About a teaspoon and a half of honey. Is the honey local too? Unfortunately not. It could be though, couldn't it? Could it could be. I could get that at the farmer's right. market. I do in the summer. Uh, it's about going. a quarter cup of okay. apple cider vinegar. About Little a lemon juice. Juice from one lemon. That is never local. No. <laughs> Touche. He got me on that one, didn't so, he? You could just give that a little whisk. Okay. Mix that together a little bit. And then I have about a half cup of olive oil. And you can just drizzle that in slowly while you're whisking the whole time, mm -hmm. emulsify it. And about a tablespoon of poppy seeds. There we go. All right. So there's our dressing. So when we return, we're going to put this all together. We're going to have our chicken dish and we're going to have our salad. So stay with us. My name is Ian Mistician. I am a uh, Luzerne County Community College Arts major. Today I'm going to be talking about steak. Um, the first thing I look for in a steak is a bright red color, uh, flesh firm, and great marbling. The first thing I'm going to do is preheat our, our, our uh, griddle at around 4 or 500 degrees Fahrenheit. After you have this at this temperature, at this point you would like to 
season and oil your steak. Right now is what I'm doing is I'm oiling the steak. Okay. At this point, you could take either salt and pepper or you could take Montreal steak seasoning. My preference would be steak seasoning. And you're just gonna drizzle a little bit on top. This will basically season your steak to your liking. I like to do both sides of the steak as well. At this point, I'm gonna take it, take it right over to the grill. I'm gonna lay it flat on the grill and push down just a little bit to get some marks. Right now it's cooking. Um, gonna get a little bit, about, you wanna cook about four to five minutes on, at this. At this point, you can see it's cooking along the outside, which is nice. At this point, you don't want you don't want the steak to stick. Just want to break it up a little bit. If you don't have your if you don't have your grill hot enough, it's going to stick. So. My, my, my experience would oil your, oil your grill and then put your steak down as well. So. I just turned it a little bit to get some marks on the bottom. Um, Don't want to play with it too much because if you play with it too much, what's going to happen is it's not going to cook fully through. Um, you can cook it as, um, to your temp or to your style. I like it just a little bit on the medium rare side. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and flip it. As you can see, it's, it's basically your great steak on the bottom side. Great, great marks. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom as well. I'm going to leave it cook. The best way to tell if it's medium, medium rare, or done is to check the, of your, I like to call it thumb on, of the, your palm. That would be the best. At this point, it is about, Not quite medium rare yet. It's, it's still it's still on the rare side yet, but it should take about about four minutes yet. At this point, I like to just cut a small hole inside the middle here, just to check the doneness. Eh, it's a almost medium rare. About two more minutes. At this point, I'm going to take it take it off the grill and now plate it. As you can see, we have a nice grilled medium rare steak with a garnish of lemon and a little bit of basil. Nice grill marks, nice steak, and it's at this point it's medium rare. So this is the, your tip of the day. Bon appetit. So our braised chicken kale and white beans are cooking in the pot over here. So They're now Chef done. Paul is going to um, dress the salad. So, Oops. You can get rid of that whisk. Okay, there you go. So we'll just take a leaf, season it mm -hmm. up a little bit. Okay. And this is um, bib lettuce. This is bib lettuce, yep. It's kind of more, more delicate than like a romaine. It really is a good tasting lettuce, isn't it's very it? Good. It's one of my yeah, favorites. It's really nice. And then just continue doing that. A little bit of seasoning to to your preference. You could also okay. toss this in a bowl if you're doing it for maybe your family of four or something like uh -huh. that. It'll make it a lot easier for you. This isn't so bad though. No. To do it leaf by leaf like this. And this way you Not know bad you're, at all. you're getting a Mm -hmm. Getting some dressing on every piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, and last one. Last. Okay. This is making me hungry. 
delicious. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And, then, right. and that's fine over there in the pot. You don't have to worry so much about that. No, you have it on low heat, so you don't really have much to worry about. And so it's been cooking for about 45 about minutes, About 45 right? minutes now from start to finish. So you can just arrange your beets. So really, this is good timing with a couple minutes left to go ahead and yeah. get your salad together, but have Absolutely. everything ready, right? Absolutely. Before. And this, it doesn't, if you don't take it off at 45 minutes exactly, it's not it going to be matter. a big deal. So. Okay. And then I'll just slice the apple last because it does discolor quickly. So you just want it to look nice and fresh. And you can do whatever you want with it. If mm -hmm. You could even throw it on a grater if you wanted to. I like to do a julienne and just arrange it on the top. Okay. That looks delicious. Thank you. I love beets. I do too. Apples, <laughs> cheese. That looks really nice. Okay, so our, our salad's salad. ready. And then you could just plate this up however you'd like. Oh, that smells delicious. Uh, it looks really good, too. I'm try and put some of the uh, kale and beans, kale on, the and bottom. beans on the bottom and then place the chicken on top just for ease. Mm -hmm. oh, look how nicely the carrots cooked and, and everything. The carrots. This uh, is really pretty, isn't it? The carrots were in there for a while. If uh -huh. you wanted to, you can throw them in with the uh, sausage and the beans as well. Okay. But when I do a braised dish, I think one of the good parts about it is the nice, yeah. soft, overcooked carrots. Uh -huh. And get all those flavors in there, right? Oh, well, this looks really, really good. This is a definite do at home, right? Absolutely. This is it. This and like is I great. said, this is something you could do in your slow cooker mm -hmm. when you're at work. I don't know, somehow to me, everything just seems so much more appealing when it's in a pot oh, like that. Yeah, absolutely. It does to me. Absolutely. I use the slow cooker too, but it, I don't know, there's if, just something about that. If you're busy though, sometimes it works out. Well, this looks marvelous. Thank you. Alrighty. There we go. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah, you. you did a great job. Thank you. Chef Paul Madalonis from Connor's Grill Room in Dallas. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. And don't forget to tune in again next time. See you. That's really good.